Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, uh, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can create this design right here. It is a nice, fast, easy one to create. And I will talk about ways that you can, again, scale this out a lot. So um, if you would like to learn about this style of design, go ahead and stick around. All right, so I am on Canva's homepage and we are going to be uh, making a design for a t-shirt today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to where it says custom size. If I click on that, I can select whatever size document I want for t-shirts. I will typically do uh, 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and that will pull up your blank page. Now I do tend to like to optimize my designs for the darker colors, so whether that is black being the top selling one, navy blue, dark heather gray, those are all going to be the ones that tend to sell the best. So I'll usually just go ahead and select black for a background color so I can optimize my design for black. This is going to be a nice simple design. Um, you will have to be very careful with the way that you choose to title or tag this um, because I don't want you to say anything that might make it, you know, a copyright or a trademark infringement. By itself, it is not. It just depends how you choose to market it. So what we are going to do is have some skeleton hands, you know, for Halloween. But inside of the skeleton hands, we are going to have like a Christmas tree. And so it is the season for Halloween and Christmas. Um, and so it makes for a really kind of cool design that you could wear pretty much throughout the fourth quarter, but just be careful again, not to reference anything that uh, could get you into any trouble. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go over to elements and we are going to do a search here and I'm just gonna put skeleton hands. And there are so many skeleton hands uh, out there. So you can see there are, if I scroll down, tons and tons and tons of skeleton hands doing all sorts of things and you could make a bunch of designs just using skeleton hands doing different things and so keep that in mind lots of things for you to look at for this one i want the skeleton hands making a heart because i do want to put the christmas tree inside the heart even with that said there are different types of hearts that you will see um, there's different ones so you can pick yep there you go any one that you think is going to work best for you. You do want it to be solid because I'm going to put a clipping mask on it. I'm going to just go ahead and grab this first one. It's easy. Does not matter what color you choose to make it. I just need to be able to see it because I'm going to use it as a mask. But here is my skeleton hands. And so it's going to go something like that in the page. And then in the middle of it, we're going to find a really simple Christmas tree. So, oops, sorry back to elements and this time we're going to search for Christmas tree and it doesn't matter which Christmas tree you pick and it does not have to be solid because when we put a clipping mask on it you're just going to get the silhouette um, style so if you wanted to pick one that is colorful or had ornaments on it go for it you're really just looking at the shape that's really all you care about is the shape I'm going to grab this one because I actually like the shape of this one and again doesn't matter what color I choose to make it I think this one is going to work really well for the shape inside the hands here. So something like that. Now, by the way, you could put it on a shirt just like that and be done. Um, it's kind of blah, but it works. But what I want to do is I want to do sort of that gold sparkle glitter mask over the hands with the green sparkle over the tree maybe even a little red star or something like that. Um, I have had people ask about the, the glitter masks and how they look. No, they will not print as glitter. You cannot use glitter in your titles or tags or in any way make it sound like there will be glitter on the shirt. It does not do that. But it will give the illusion of glitter because it will be printed you know, with the different colors, almost like little dots of different colors that give it sort of that sparkly look. But, you know, try not to mislead people. Don't, obviously, if you put glitter in the tags for like Amazon, you'll get, you know, it'll get rejected. 
that said, the glitter masks do look good. I have definitely printed them. I bought some myself. Um, I do have a video on my channel if you were to look. Um, one, I think it's titled like, how does this really print? And it shows different printing techniques and, and it has the actual products and shows how it looks when it's actually printed. Cause I know people have asked about that. So there is a video on that somewhere on my channel. <laughs> um, I'll try to get it linked, um, but it does look good. You just have to be careful not to imply that it actually is glitter, but it will still look good. It'll give a nice texture and contrast in the printing. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead now and we are gonna look at some masks. Now, in order to mask this with different things, the easiest way is gonna actually be just to take the tree out entirely and mask the tree here and mask the hands separately and then go ahead and put it in once we're done with the masks. So that's gonna be the easiest. And so starting here, I can just go ahead and save this as the frame. So what I can do is just go ahead and put skeleton hand frame. And I'm just gonna save it like that. So I'm gonna hit save, download. When we're doing a frame, it has to be a transparent background. So make sure you have transparent background selected for your frames. It's a PNG and we can just go ahead and hit download. So we've got our frame ready. And now we're gonna go ahead and put some masks over these. So we're not gonna move them. We need to know where they are and make sure our masks line up good. So the first thing I wanted was a gold glitter. So gold glitter. And I can do photos, I can do graphics. Photos may be a little bit easier and there's all different sorts of shades of glitter. It depends how coarse you want it to be or how fine you want it to be, or, you know, kind of sale, so, um, what shade, you know, whether you want it to be a little bit more almost orangey or a little bit more champagne-y, doesn't matter. Pick your gold glitter and you can always, by the way, play with it too after you're done. You can always, you know, increase the saturation or, or whatever. So you like that, that's good. Now let's go ahead and pick a green glitter for the tree, green glitter. And again, whatever shade of green you want, you probably want the coarseness to match uh, this pretty well because you don't want one that's really coarse and one that's really fine. You do want them to kind of look as though they're compatible with one another. So I'm going to pick one that I think is going to sort of match that pretty well. Um, let's see. So that one looks pretty coarse. You can tell. So maybe something a little bit finer. That one's pretty coarse. It's got a lot of contrast to it. So I am still looking. This one is a lot finer. And so that actually, I think those colors look relatively well together. So I might stick with this one and rather than shrink it down, because if I shrink it down, that's going to be very fine. I want the coarseness to be again, about the same. So I'll blow it up until the coarseness looks about the same. And I'm going to crop it down like this instead. And so it is going to crop and I'm just going to cover my tree that way. Now I might need to zoom in because I'm going to do the star separately and it's so little. I want to make sure that I cover the entire tree without going past the star. So to do that, I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard to move my design one pixel at a time. And so something like that is going to look really good right there. Perfect. And then I'm thinking I might do a red star. So why not? Let's just go with red glitter. And again, pick whichever red glitter you want. That looks pretty decent by itself. Yeah, something like that. So again, we're gonna crop it in rather than shrink it so that we can kind of keep that coarseness about the same. And I can zoom in too to really Make sure that those are lined up perfectly and that looks pretty good. You can also use transparency here if you want to. So say I was to hit this, um, there's a little checkered box right here. If I hover over it, it says transparency. If I click there, I can bring that transparency down and now I can see where it's lined up on my star. Not that I need to crop it any tighter, but I could, but there's my star underneath. So I make sure it's covered entirely. 
you just want to make sure you get rid of your transparency before you then go to save your mask and so now this is my skeleton hands mask and now we are ready to download now whenever we're dealing with a mask it doesn't matter if it's transparent background or not because you're only going to put the mask over the frame and the frame had the transparent background so it doesn't matter if you hit transparent background or not on this one it really doesn't matter you could or you couldn't it doesn't make a bit of difference but you do have to make sure that your frame has the transparent background and once we have that saved um, the next step is to jump over to photo p super quick um, if you've been watching any of my videos, you've probably seen me use PhotoP a lot, but if you haven't and you're new to it, literally just type PhotoP.com into your browser. It is super easy and super free, <laughs> and it'll come up with a page that looks like this. From here, you hit open from computer. It'll pull up your downloads, and you're going to start by picking your frame. So you'll open your frame, and it'll pull that up for you cool thing about this is no you don't have to log in you don't have to give any credit card information you don't have to have an account nothing totally free literally just photop.com browser done easy so here it has your frame pulled up and so you can see your frame you know it's a transparent background because it's got that checkered background that's what you're looking for and then we're just going to put the mask right on top so I'm going to go over to the left hand corner up top. It says file. If you click that three spaces down, you're going to want the one that says open and place. So open and place. Click that. That will pull up your downloads again. And then you're just going to go ahead and select the mask and hit open. Now it should put your mask right over the top. So now what you should be seeing is just your mask. And if you come over to the side, you'll see there's two layers. The mask is the one on top. The background layer is your frame. And the mask should be the one that's highlighted. Assuming all of that looks correct, all you have to do is go to the top where it says layer, click that, and then about halfway down, you'll see one that says clipping mask. If you click that, it will automatically put the clipping mask right on top. And so there you can see right there, your tree, your hands, your everything, and it is ready then to export. So then you can just go to file, about halfway down, you'll see something that says export as you can select PNG and you'll have to give it a second, but it's going to pull up a little box for you. Here it is. At this point, you can retitle it if you want to. So I, it says skeleton hand frame. I can just put skeleton hand uh, glitter, whatever you want to title it. It's still a PNG. It should still have the same size and everything. So you just have to hit save. And then you can jump right back over to Canvas. So that really is all you needed Photo P for. And when you know how to use it, it is super fast. I mean, you jump over there one minute and then you're back on Canva. And it is the easiest, most efficient way to do this. So there can be roundabout ways to do it. There's other ways to do it. That is the fastest and easiest way I know of. So um, that is the way I prefer to do any and all clipping masks. So from here, I can just go ahead and add another page and I'm just going to go ahead and upload the clipping mask. So if I can come over to the side here, you'll see the tab that says uploads, click on that, click upload, and then go ahead and upload what you just made. Perfect. And once you have it uploaded, you can bring it over onto your page. And so now here's what we have. So piece of cake. So now all we have to do is take this tree and put it inside these hands. The easiest way to do that is going to just be to make a duplicate copy and take one and crop out the hands, take one, crop out the tree, and then just put one copy over the other. So super easy to do here. All you're going to do is hit Control and D, and that will duplicate it. So now you have, hopefully, oops, I got three. Oops, there we go, two. Now you have two identical versions of the same thing, right? So with the bottom version, I'm going to go ahead and just come and crop out the tree. And with the top version, I'm going to come crop out the hands. So now I just have a tree and hands. And I can take this tree and it should fit perfectly in those hands because we checked it out up top. And there you go. So now I can group those together. I can go ahead, drag over all of them and hit group. And now I've got my one image. And then from here, I can resize it. I can put it anywhere in the frame that I like. 
So something like that. And it is ready to go. Now again, you could have picked any colors that you wanted. If this tree looks a little too light for you, you could always go ahead and make it darker. Because I have these as two different images, by the way, if I ungroup this, I can go ahead and edit them separately. So if I want to take just this tree and go over to edit, and then go to adjust, at this point, I can play with the brightness, I can play with the saturation, I can play with the, the tint and the temperature. So I can make that a little bit darker by doing that tint that way into the greener shades. I can go ahead, I can make it a little darker by just taking that brightness down. I could up the contrast if I wanted to, to make it the sparkle a little bit more. I could up the saturation or I could up the vibrance. So you can see how I can just start playing with these to kind of make it look however I want. And I can edit them each separately. So I could edit the trees one way. And then if I wanted to go ahead and then take the hands, I can edit, I could do the same thing. So if I wanted to adjust the hands in any way, if I wanted them to be brighter or darker or more contrasty, or more saturated, I can do that. So you can see those are really saturated. I don't necessarily want that, but you can see how I could play with it. I could also increase the sharpness. That's going to make sort of the grain a little bit, I guess, grainier in the, in the glitter look. And so there you have it. And there are my skeleton hands holding my Christmas tree. Um, and again, you didn't have to make the star red. I could have made the star yellow. I could have not had a star at all and just put the tree. So really you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. You could put a Christmas ornament in here too, um, or a candy cane or pretty much anything else you want. You can use this technique however you want. So be as creative as you like, come up with as many designs as you like. Again, it doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. I mixed kind of that Christmas and Halloween look together, but you could have gone all Halloween and put a pumpkin inside those hands. Um, so be creative, start playing. That's the easiest way to find out what works and what doesn't is just to play. Once you have it the way you want it, you can just go ahead and title it. Um, let's go with skeleton, uh, hands and tree. And then I'll just leave it like that. And we're gonna go over to share. We'll download it. You want a transparent background. You want it to be a PNG. We're just going to select the second page because that's all we need. We'll hit done and we will download. And it is now ready to put on whatever you feel like putting it on. So it can go on a t-shirt. It could go on a pillow. It could go on a tote bag. It could go on a sweatshirt. I mean, you name it. It could be put on pretty much anything that you like. Again, just be careful with your title and tags. But otherwise, it will print nice. It will look good. It will, you know, be much like it is on the screen. There's no glitter on your screen, but it gives that sort of sparkle look. And so that is, that's the way that that's going to be. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you have video requests, you can put that in the comments section below. I'll see if I can get you added to the list. I hope you guys are doing really well with all of your um, fourth quarter stuff. Um, I know fourth quarter just started, so hopefully you're already starting to see some good payoff. If not, hang in there. Um, and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.